Today, I talked to Jeff Hunt. Jeff runs a podcast called Jeff Needs Help and Jeff Needs Sports. He is the first one that I know to start a vodcasting network. So it was very interesting talking to him. Jeff is a great friend, and we go back to the beginning from when I first started podcasting. And it was great to have him on the show. So let's talk shop with Jeff Hunt. How are you doing, Jeff? Thanks for coming on. I'm doing great, John. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. You know, I, I, I figured, you know, you were really the perfect guest for me to have on this show because you are one of the reasons why I started vodcasting to begin with. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> because it's been a journey. Yeah, yeah. yeah be, because it's like, you know, I've only been vodcasting since I think March or April. And I remember... Like two weeks before I went live for the first time, you went live for the first time before me and you invited me on the show and, you know, it was just like I was one of those new vodcasters that was camera shy and I didn't know what to do or how to talk, you know, and it was kind of like you, you are really the first one to introduce me to the vodcasting world. So I'd like to thank you. <laughs> hey, it, it was, it was my pleasure. Um, I, I was the same way. And, you know, the flip side of that is you were kind enough to come on my show and help me along the way and participate and say yes to all the crazy, uh, the live streams and stuff. So it's uh, it's mutual. The feeling is definitely mutual. Yeah. Well, uh, like in the beginning, when, when I had first started podcasting, I had met a group of guys, whether on Twitter or through Facebook, Facebook groups, you know, and you were one of them and we kind of stuck together, you know, throughout the whole thing. And for sure, we were friends, we became friends. And, you know, it, it's, it's so great because I think that that proves that the vodcasting community online is, is so tight. You know, everybody looks out for each other. Yeah. Every, and everybody is, is very beneficial to each other. Yeah. There's, it's, it's definitely no competition. It's quite the opposite for sure. Right. Right. I mean, everybody's going on each other's show, you know, everybody's promoting each other and trying to get each other up, you know, so it's, it's all, it's, it kind of feels like a team, you know, and yep. You know, you are, you have always been the sports guy that I knew. You, you always podcasted about sports and you have this show, uh, Tuesday Aftermath that you do. And then uh, Jeff needs help. It was always really great sports content coming out from your shows, you know, and you had a, a, a partner that you used to do with Tuesday Aftermath, right? Yeah. 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 Last year, last year, me and, a, uh, me and my partner, uh, Max did the show. Yeah. The first season. Mm -hmm. and, and then now you move, you move the show to, to solo. Are you still doing it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, so I, I switched it over now. I went to, uh, it's, it's called Jeff needs sports now. <laughs> so Jeff needs help was a spinoff of Tuesday aftermath. And then now Jeff needs sports as a spinoff of Jeff needs help. And, you know, it was appropriate with everything that happened and the, the downtime we had in the summer. So I kind of stuck with it. So, and then, so what it was is then I was offered, uh, a guy that I had worked with and done an interview with, uh, Chris LeBron from Off the Ball Podcast, he had offered for me to be a part of creating a sports network. So it's essentially a solo show, but I've I've got multiple partners. So, you know, in any given week, you know, one of the other guys from the network helped me out. So it's never essentially a solo show, but it's been quite a trip. And it's been a little over 12 months now. It's been quite a journey. Wow. You are the only person I know that has actually started a podcast network. Can, can you talk about a little bit on the creation of that and how that went? Like, how does that work? Well, yeah, it was great. Well, so first of all, you know, you already spoke to it. You have to kind of create this family and create this team. And so ours was so organic. It was so cool. So, um, you know, I discovered a few guys through a you know, actually the same Facebook page that we connected through and then you guys were kind enough to do an interview with Jeff Needs Help. Right. Um, you know, I connected with some other people and then I went and listened to their their sports shows. This was a little earlier than that. And I'm like, man, that's an awesome show. And all, I simply, it, it became from communication. I would reach out on Twitter or Facebook or, you know, whatever and just tell them, man, great show. You know, I liked it. I listened to you guys this week. Mm -hmm. And then we would communicate back and then, you know, as the springtime came around, they contacted me and were like, hey, you know, I want to do an interview with you. 
And then I would hook them up with guys that I didn't interview with. And it just kind of started building this web similar to what we did, you know, like you spoke to, like our group, mm -hmm. you know, of, of the general discussion group. And then um, finally, they're like, hey, I think us guys can all get together. You know, we had, you know, I don't know how many guys we reached out to at first. And it's it started with maybe, you know, we, you, know you just got to start a website. You got to kind of be on the same page. But it's 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 the Wild West out there. There's not a ton of there's not a ton of uh, lulls and stuff like that. You know, it's a lot of like, you know what I mean? I, over yeah. the years, I'm sure you've been in different businesses. Right. So, you know, and, it's, and that's going to come with time. Like we all know that like somebody's out of the network, somebody's going to go huge, mm -hmm. you know? So, I mean, you're going to have me, you know, down here. So, so what, what it, the mainly what it did is a, we always have people to create content with smart people to create content with, you know, to reach out, uh, much like a like in our format in sports, let's compare it to like an ESPN or something like that. Mm -hmm. We've always got other guys like at any given time in the week, I can reach out and say, hey, I want to talk about like tonight um, as we record this, the NBA finals are starting. So the guys earlier got together and four of them did an NBA, NBA finals preview show. Each nice. one of them has their own separate podcast. But that was a vodcast that they do. So there's where the vodcasting comes in. So now anytime we do a live stream, there can be – we've had up to eight guys on a live stream, um, wow. you know, bouncing ideas off each other and things like that. So then, you know, then we also write for the website. Uh, you know, we put out articles each week and things like that. And then all of our links are on there. It's mainly more of a family um, or a team. It's mainly more of a team than anything. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you support each other. And, and and things like that and you know if somebody's like hey i'm having a tough week i had a guest drop out okay i'll be on there you know what i mean like we'll keep your show moving or whatever but then we also the obligation as far as sports goes you know you're on a t you're on a time frame yeah. if, if you say you're going to do a sports show like you've got to watch all the games on you know say football we'll say saturday and sunday and then monday and tuesday you got to spit out all this content you know what all i mean right. and you you can't fake it so that that's the unique thing about the sports about the sports content is that it's it's fun but it's it's a lot of homework. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. but, but it's been great. I, I could have never dreamed that 13 months ago that I would be working with the level of um, creators and stuff that I am now, and 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 that the, the people they're reaching out to. So it, it's been great. It, it, it's really been a good time. So how, how does it work? Like, are, are you assigned specific teams or do you literally watch every game that no, comes on? Yeah, I'm, I, I'm more in general right now. So I try to watch basically as many games as I can and speak on, you know, whatever we feel are the most important or the big games or whatever. Mm -hmm. Now, like, for instance, we have guys, we have each guy has a – you know, particular team that they love. I mean, we're sports guys. We, you know, we, I mean, we're not unemotional here. So like, for instance, when the high state Buckeyes kick back up, I'll obviously do, you know, some pretty intense high state Buckeyes stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got New York Knicks guys that, you know, they interview New York Knicks beat writers and they interview New York Knicks scouts. Um, we've got guys from Atlanta. We've got guys from Florida. We've got guys from California. We've got guys from the South. And so, yeah, we all have, we all are general. And then we've got NBA guys that, you know, they're breaking down the draft. They're breaking down players. And I'm, I love the NBA, but I don't know the game like they do. And I don't know these – I don't know college freshmen like they do. Mm -hmm. So everybody's kind of like – I lean a little more towards football, a little more towards college football. And we've got guys that are experts on Division two possible NBA future stars. So it's like, yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's very unique. It's very unique. But there's no assignments right now. Like it's a free-for-all and – free flowing thing. Uh -huh. We want everybody to have the freedom to keep doing the show that they were doing before they, before they got there. And That's then, great. but when we work, but then other groups, you know, other networks reach out to us. We work with other networks uh, along the way. Like it's uh yeah, it's, it's pretty right. crazy. It's very non, like I say, it's very non-competitive. It's very supportive. We want to all bring each other up to the level of the, you know, the ESPNs and the Fox sports and, you know, things like that of the world. So That's awesome. That's awesome. That yeah. You're creating a community like that. It is. It's a, yeah, it's, it, it is, it's, it's wonderful. And, uh, you know, just like we work together, it inspires mm -hmm. us to keep, you know, the wheels churning. Exactly. Um, and, exactly. Yeah. So when there's like a, a special game, like let's say a playoff game, do you guys live stream watching it together and comment on it as it's happening? 
We haven't done that yet, but that is in our future plans. And the only reason we haven't done it yet is just a matter of timing. Mm -hmm. um, that is something that we are going to do. And football is a little easier. Well, see, basically what happened <laughs> is we came out of the shutdown with sports, and then all the sports were on all the time. Like NBA was playing, you know, four games a day, and then football kicked in, and there was so much going on. And then everybody's trying to follow their own sports and everything. So we we do we've done some we do some pregame stuff like today the guys did pregame before the finals. We do some postgame stuff, uh, you know. Then we do random stuff, which you know all about that. And we're the, I think you you're the king of random uh, or spontaneous. It's not random. It's spontaneous. Spontaneous. Yeah. So as of now, we haven't we haven't done any streaming during the game, but that is absolutely something that is coming up, you know, in the future once. But you know as well as I do, there's so many things to do that you got to like, got to start dividing stuff up <laughs> and yep. focus on, yep. on things. And then we're, you know, we're still all, every one of us is still putting out audio podcasts at the same time and doing interviews and things like that. So, you know, and we, and of course, we all, we have families and, you know, a lot of us have, you know, everybody's uh, got a, a different <laughs> life outside of what we love to do so much. So, <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it keeps us busy, but it's, it's pretty, it's pretty excellent. So, I mean, as a, as a from a production point of view, uh, I know that sports has come back, and I primarily watch football. All right, so I've been watching right. Buccaneer games, I've been watching Patriot games, uh, Cowboy games. So, what are your thoughts on there not being a crowd and the studios simulating the noise? It, it so. My first taste of that was actually early summer in, in Europe. So, uh, soccer came back. The Premier League came back, which was the first time I got a taste test of that. And I was on board from it. If you go back to the spring, you can even listen to some of my shows. I was on board for the imported, we'll call it imported crowd noise. Yeah. And um, so far, so good. Now, do, is it the exact same as as it would feel when there's a real crowd of course not no. but i think that it would have been a mistake to try to not do that and and they came up with agreements like there's a decibel level uh there's a content you know they can't just a home team can't just they can't play a bunch of booze and they can't do you know it, it's yeah. got to stay at like i think it's right around 75 decibels um i i love it i and it's say if um what i've really noticed and i've only done this maybe once that i've been out since the games have been on um, if you're watching it in a public place, you can barely tell the difference. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Because if you're in a if you're in a sports bar and you're not listening to the the announcers anyway, and you look up, it yeah. looks just like yeah, you can't hear. And, and I, yeah. what's really been amazing is how the athletes have handled it. I mean, these guys are playing, especially the NFL, a high level of football. Considering there's nobody watching them, it's it's. I'm I'm impressed. Um, the NBA took a while, a while to get used to. They basically use a, you know, a, a digital screens all the way around the court. That's been the biggest change. Really? But wow. now it's been two months into this, mm -hmm. we're just used to it. It's a success so far. If we can if we can call it a success, um, as a sports right. I mean, fan, it, it takes a little getting used to. You know, but, yeah, uh, and you're a town guy, so you can you can understand. It, it becomes right. white noise a little bit, which kind of irritates me. Yeah, um, I, I think if that if that fake crowd noise wasn't there, I think the game would just be like really quiet and boring, you know. So yeah, I, I think they they made the right decision to have yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. And when they first started baseball, they even experimented with fake fans. Um, I assume that it probably cost too much to stick with that, but they had digital fans and it looked like there were fans at the game. Wow. But I assume that that just had to be too. Co they couldn't be cost effective to do for you know, 16 NFL games a week, but it, it was pretty weird looking, but it, it worked, but, uh, it just, that some reason that just didn't last. I assume it was money. Well, I, I think, I think the, the point I'm, I'm trying to make is that even professional broadcasters compared to vodcasters who are primarily on the internet, uh, th they're trying new techniques. You know, th they try yep. new things. Uh, they're implementing new effects, new audio, uh, because of the quarantine. Now, I know your podcast was affected by the quarantine. Um, how did that work out for you? So, <laughs> which is, it's ironic because what we're doing now was, you know, the, the benefit of it. So 
we all remember, you know, as soon as things shut down, everybody went to um, online, you know, conversations right. and meetings and things like that. And so we were, we were slightly ahead of that curve. I had just started dipping my toe into vodcasting mm -hmm. in March when, you know, Ohio, for instance, you know, you guys are obviously Ohio and yours a little different pace, mm -hmm. but when Ohio was like, okay, that's it. So when everybody switched to online stuff, I had just started to do it. So I'd had the software downloaded and it was my first taste of doing anything of it. I think I'd ordered my camera maybe two weeks before the shutdown. Yeah. So here's the benefit to me is once we went to online and we weren't in studio anymore with guests mm -hmm. is that I do better with a guest, you know, face to face, eyeball to eyeball, when I can read your facial expressions and kind of feel where you're coming from. And so it was a huge benefit to me. It, it my, my interviews with other, uh, you know, with people outside of my area and stuff went way up instead of the phone conversations that I was doing because there was some, that's just how I speak to people naturally. Right. So it was a, it was a natural benefit to me. And then plus everybody was more people were watching. I mean, me and you did some shows back in probably May. I think maybe we did the morning buzz is about when we started back in May. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we'd have people in the middle of the day, you know what I mean? We're having them. Yeah. We're having a mimosa, you know, <laughs> me and you were be about politics or, you yeah. know, general subject mm -hmm. and there's people at home watching. So then we got eyeballs on to like, Hey, what is this format? You know, that we're, right. that we're seeing. So it was just a, it was just an advertisement for the, the format of vodcasting. So w once again, we all know that like nothing good has come out of this. I'm just saying that is, that is the result. It, of, it was just a, a great opportunity, I, I think for podcasting. Yeah you know, to uh, step up the game a little bit because uh, podcasting statistics went down dramatically because nobody was commuting to work. Nobody, nobody was really driving. going anywhere, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, they had to do something to make up for the loss in downloads. So, but at the same time, it's perfect because, you know, it expands your audience, you know, being live or doing vodcasting, you know, it, it expands your audience to people that wouldn't normally sit down and listen to a podcast. You know, they'd rather watch right. something. So, yep. you know, it's, it's beneficial, but you know, the circumstances were horrific, but it, it, yeah, yeah, it, just, happens, it just happens to work in podcasters favors, you know? So yeah, it, it totally did. Yeah. Do you, do you remember your first live show? Uh, I do. So the, okay. So the first time I was on live, uh, was when, um, dad's a drink invited me on. Um, I had had, I had had uh, DJ Kelly from dad's a drink. He volunteered to help me. Um, I, that was my first, I, I basically, I put out the message. I said, I need help with this. Who wants to help me experiment? He volunteered me and him hit it off. We had a great interview within the next week or so he invited me on his show i went on there that was the first time that i had been like live on somebody's show and then it was within a couple of weeks we had an nfl draft show you showed you were there actually you showed up on the nfl draft show yep. and that was my first long vodcast and i did the first round of the nfl draft back in that would be in early may um i was like three hours i sat here and we just went and we watched you know there you go you talk about the live uh shows we uh, watched the NFL draft and then we commented on as we watched it and it turned out great. I got good response. I got good interaction. And then from there it was, there was no holds barred were for you, sure. Were but you that camera was, shy at first when uh, your first appearance? So I, I don't, I'm not necessarily sh camera shy as much as I have no idea what this looks like. Um, my camera's not great now. You know, I've still got more upgrades to make, mm -hmm. but then I'm, I don't know if I had this camera or not, but, um, you know, my background's not set. Everything was spontaneous. You know, it's, you know, I'm, I'm down here in my basement. Yeah, it was, it was weird. Um, I guess I'd been podcasting long enough to where the self-conscious thing, I was just out totally out the window. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty good at that. You know, that's a, that's a personal thing to where I can just throw myself into something. I'm not, yeah, I don't, I don't get nervous or anything ab well, about great, things like that. I I, I get a lot of podcasters saying that, you know, th they don't, they're not comfortable in front of the camera. They don't know how to talk and, you know, yeah. they'll, they'll get flustered or, you know, and they're afraid they're going to make fool of themselves. But, you know, right. it, it, you know I, uh, I was talking to uh, Travis uh, from Poddex, you know, and he was saying that, and I think he's right, where being in front of the camera is kind of like a muscle. You know, you have to keep at it, keep working at it. Yep. 
and you know you'll just get better at it. that's what people have to do you know y- you want to go live you want to bring your show up to the next level then you know this is what you got to do yeah i had an interview last week and i said uh, so to here's my thing now and this is probably something i bet it's much easier for you you're such a creative person so now that i've started writing for our for our website uh, i'm not a natural writer i'm a i'm a talker you know, I, I have thoughts and I have them in my head, but to, you know, literally just from, you know, I don't have a writing background or education that, so that is tough for me. So when I write, that's probably where I'm quote unquote camera shy. Like when I, every time I hit publish for an article, I'm very nervous about it. And then, you know, people read it and give me good feedback and it, it makes me feel better. So that is my thing. And I talked to a gentleman last week who was on my show and he's like, that's just something. And it's exactly what you just said. You just keep doing it. You just yeah. keep doing it. You know, me and you proved that. I mean, we were, yeah. we've kind of been in this together or at least parallel for yeah. six months now. And, yeah. you know, you just get on there and you relax and See, that's enjoy it. Like, and you and I had each other to feed off of, you know, it's like, yeah, um, exactly. If I said, "Hey Jeff, oh, want to go live?" You know, yeah, you were down. You know, like, and it was for, <laughs> for nothing. You know, like, hours. let's just hang out. You know, and people watched us. They they commented. You know, and yeah. they interacted with us, and it was awesome. I still like it. I still like every every comment I get. You know, on the shows, every question, every interaction means I, I still I just feed on that so much. I that is what I like about the vodcasting more mm-hmm. than the audio more than anything is because. You know, we can be having a conversation and somebody can have some just a, a wonderful question yeah. that I didn't think about, you know, on my own. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden that conversation, you know, splays off into, you know, 15 minutes of a great conversation just from, okay. you know, somebody taking the time to, to question it. It's, it's all great uh, content, that's, you know? Yeah, it's my favorite part of it. Yeah. 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 So when, when you go live, how many uh, platforms do you stream to? So now I just do uh, Facebook and Twitter. Okay. I usually put my videos out later on YouTube, but I don't go live to them. So yeah, I, I only stream to Facebook and Twitter. And then of course on Facebook, I've got, I don't know, maybe six different groups or pages, you know, that I, that I go to, you know, that, that's something like, once again, I don't mean to come on here and act like I'm some kind of wily veteran. <laughs> Uh, I've still got a lot of work to do and, and, and figure, and I, th- I'm thinking about switching over to broadcasting to YouTube and just see how the, the numbers go and the interaction goes. So when I vodcast, especially with sports, we, t- you know, we talked about this. I don't have, so for instance, like when I did my general discussion, you know, I'd have a topic and I go on and then we have a rundown of the topic or whatever. Well, with sports, you know, you're, you're talking about games that just happened. It can be random. And so we realize that somebody might click onto Twitter halfway into the show. Uh, they may just hear us say the word, you know, Chicago Bears. Yeah. And then they may spend five minutes listening to us talk about Chicago Bears and then they're gone. So we realize that, that all of our views aren't people that are there for two hours. You know, right. they might be there for five minutes. So we have to always we, – we basically, in our minds and our – the off-the-ball network, our mindset is kind of – we're constantly putting out like, you know, turning over the content the whole time we're talking. So no matter when somebody clicks on, they can participate, they can get in and out. And we understand that. You know what I mean? We're not yeah. insulted by somebody that stops by for seven minutes. Yeah. Um, and then we hope they go listen to the audio version and all that while they're driving to work. Mm-hmm. So we're, uh, we're always trying to interact – we, you know, I mean, we, so, so Twitter is, is great for that. You know what I mean? In and out, yes. in and out. Like, I don't know how many times I've caught you guys. I just happen to be able to like stumble across you for five minutes, but yet I, I listen to you for five minutes. I might comment and be like, well, I've got to go eat dinner. I'm on my way to wherever. It's just, it's, it's not a TV show. You know what I mean? We understand people are constantly flipping channels and, but we appreciate it. Uh, you know, that might be five minutes. We might get a great question and who, you know, who knows where that goes. Well, I, I guess in a way you, you kind of answered my next question because I was going to ask you whether you uh, sit down and plan out your episodes. But uh, with sports, I guess you kind of can't do that. It's kind of on the, on the spot. It's a right? different yeah. animal. Yeah. Yeah, it is a, di- it is a different animal. Um, I'll, you know, we'll send out a schedule. Like I do a show each week and it's kind of a, it's kind of guessing what the stories are going to be the upcoming week. Mm-hmm. So we kind of tell people like, well, here's, here's like maybe four or five games to watch and why you want to watch. And this is how it can change the season. 
But um, but you're right with sports. You know, at any time we can, um, you know, we can be talking about the current game, and then somebody says, you know, what whatever. For instance, like, oh, Tom Brady's not as good as Peyton Manning, and that might spew off into a ten minute conversation that we didn't even plan on happening. But that's it's essentially sports talk radio, right? And then now, and, and Jeff needs help. It's more of a structured show. My guests get sent, you know, a list of questions, and we we try to go through them in order so my guests are prepared. And then, of course, you know. You let that go. You actually, you taught me kind of the question format, um, you know, months back. Uh, always thankful for that. And I've kind of stuck to that. And that's so they're two totally different <laughs> things. Yeah. But with, with sports, yeah, with sports, um, you never know who's listening. You never know what they care about, what team they care about. So you can kind of throw a subject out there. And w- we could probably go live each time without a plan at all mm-hmm. and and still put out and still have to cut ourselves off in an hour because that's just the nature of sports. I guess it just, it depends on the format of the show, you know? You know? Yeah. So like with your network, you know, that's more on the spot, and, uh, mm-hmm. but with your personal show, it's more planned, more strategic, you know, you're it's planning out. hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, are you 100%. the type of guy to constantly obsess about your stats? No, um, I'm quite the opposite because not that I don't care and not, and, and mm-hmm. I, I want, I want more and more people to listen just because I like the interaction, you know what I mean? But I do, my theory is, and I, it's corny, but I do each show for like, because I found this out after doing the Tuesday aftermath last year, you know, I had no idea what, how many people would listen. I don't know how many people listen to anybody's shows. I went into it totally blind, but then, you know, I found out, like say after the season, I would talk to like, uh, you know, some, someone, a, a friend or someone, a uh, Facebook or someone just getting touch me. And they're like, Oh no, like every Wednesday morning, I the li- first thing I did was listen to your show. So and my mindset is I do my show, you know, if there's that one person that listens to it, you know, every week, uh, like for instance, um, I have no, I would never know. And, and don't, it's none of my business how many people listen to the basement search, but I listen to it every week. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like right. it doesn't, and but every week it's consistent. So if you told me there was 8 million or, or just me, I, I get the same show. I get the same satisfaction. So I try to do the show as if, you know, if there's that one person and then of course we all hope it takes off and yeah. you know, you know, you want more listeners just because you want more interaction. You want to make people happy, but uh, no, I don't obsess over it. I, a lot of times I won't, I really don't even look that often. No, because I, I, it's, see, it's, I see it all over social media. Like, like everybody posts, everybody posts like, oh, I just hit a thousand downloads. Oh, I just hit 5,000 downloads, you know? And it's like, all right, you know, that's great. I'm happy for you. But at the same time, you know, it's, you shouldn't be so worried about your numbers so much as the kind, the type of content you're putting out, the quality of the Absolutely. content. Absolutely. You know, so I, I, I think first and foremost, your audience should come first. Uh, and then, yes. and then your stats, you know, or your stats yeah, I totally should be agree like four or fifth place, you know, <laughs> compared to what you should be doing. But <laughs> like, yeah, for instance, we've done, we've done our, our live, our live streams, you know, and these other guys, you know, they've got, you know, they've got a bigger fan base and stuff than I do. So like when I'm on their show, you know, we'll do a show on a, say a Sunday evening or something, and it'll have 2000 views that evening. You know right. what I mean? And then I might do one on Tuesday evening that has 80. Yeah. Um, you just don't know. It's so sporadic. You don't know when people are scrolling through. You got to, it's, it's such a right place at the right time situation. It really but, uh, is. but if you get, if you get caught up, if you get caught up in that, we all do this, we, you know, none of us are making enough money to do it. Um, we're all putting way more work into it. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean? Then, then the feedback that we get and we, that's what we do it for is the audience. And, yeah. but if I just have one person, you know, text me like, Oh, I listen to your show and I have thoughts on it. You know, you know, it really does. It, it, mm-hmm. it may, makes my day. I, I think we're all a, a bit like that in this community. Yeah. I, I think that if, if you're into podcasting for money, I think you should just change your career. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because it, it, it's going to be a long run. And, and I'm not against it. Now, now I do work with a guy who's, you know, he's a graduate of UNLV and, yeah. you know, and broadcasting and stuff. And he is going to, you know, he's going he's gonna to be huge, you know, you know, someday. Right. I mean, but there, he's there still, are some breakout. But he's thoughts. putting in his time now. Though. He's he's putting in his time now. And he, yeah. you know what I mean? And but he treats me just like if I was Joe Rogan. You know what that's I mean? Right. Like he doesn't, you know, and I think that's what's going to help us all out is, you know, none of us think that any of us are too big or too small. 
Yeah. You know, for the Yeah, you can't let your ego the, get the best of you. Right. Right. Yeah. So egos aside, who would you love to have on your show? So there's one guy, um, as sports people know it, his name's Ryan Rosillo. Uh he's been on he's been on he has Ryan Rosillo, uh he does a podcast now, it's the Ryan Rosillo show. Um he's just he's he's always uh, He's done sports podcasting. He was on ESPN for a lot of years. Some things went sour. So then he went to the uh, Bill Simmons network and now he's on there. And he is honestly, truly like somebody that I would like to sit and talk to because I just love the way he's handled his, that, you know, that side of the business awesome. for so long and just, j just his techniques and everything. I've kind of, he's, he's, we're about the same age, but I've just always kind of patterned myself after, a little bit after him, you know, I'm no, uh, I, I could never be him or anywhere near, but that, that's, that's one guy. Then of course, um, you know, any, uh, you know, I, I tell you what, honestly, John, I've had people on my show that I've listened to their podcast and they've came, I've had them on the show and didn't like, I had Jay Stevens on, he does a, you know, sports podcast out of Indiana yeah. and I, he asked me to be on his show and I was truly honored. I'm like, wow, this guy, like someone I look up to asked me to be on his show. He that's came great. on my show. You, you, you know what I mean? Like I, he's, yeah, he's not world famous yet, but he, I mean, he is really, you know, climbing the ladder, Still, but even these are people you I look up to, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Just, I mean, every time that like, you know, you and Frank have had me on your show, that means a sure. ton. When somebody asks you to be on their show, it really genuinely means a ton to me. Um, mm -hmm. I'm way too, I'm way too old. I'm past like being obsessed with somebody's fame or all of that. Like I don't separate you guys from somebody just because they, they make money doing. It. I'm not like that. You know, I'm not like that. So. I know that. I know that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, when somebody asked me to be on a show, that is truly like I take it serious, and it's uh, it's truly an honor. Um, so it's it's are, been amazing. What are your thoughts on, let's say, because I've seen this around too. What are your thoughts on charging people to come on to your show? Well, see, that's a tough one. Uh, I okay. Here's here's what I'll say about that. I everybody has agreements and everybody has ways they do business and we, we do live in America. So business is business. I mean, that's just the truth of it. You know, business is business. Uh -huh. And I, I've always said this, if somebody at that's between those people, if somebody is willing to do that, then that's their decision as an adult. Mm -hmm. um, and if somebody's willing to accept it, because as long as you can say no, I don't have any any problem with it. You know what I mean? You're yeah. not forcing anybody to do it. Um, yeah, I have no problem with that. I would love to get to the point to where somebody, you know, that I would be in that, you know, we, we, we none of us can lie. We would all take the money. Oh, yeah. Of course. I yeah. Mean, you know. It, it is awkward. The equipment's you know, not free. It is awkward. <laughs> but no, you're, yeah, you're right. You're right. The business part of it is awkward because I've been a, you know, I've been a sole proprietor before and I've been through all that and I don't love that part of it. And that's, yeah. that's one thing about the, uh, the network that even though I take it serious is not my favorite part, but you know, you gotta be a grown up and you gotta dig in, you, you know, you, you and I both know you gotta make these decisions and, um, mm -hmm. it's not my favorite part of it. I, I, I absolutely didn't get into it for that. I can tell you that. No, podcasting, but, I think it is really, you know, you should really just do it for fun you know, d try not to take yourself too seriously. Just put out great content and, uh, you know, your what show happens? will succeed on its own. You know, your audience mm -hmm. will come and, and that'll be that. But um, where do you see your uh, your podcast or your vodcast in like a year? What, what Do you have like any aspirations or dreams? Yeah, I do. So I've got a, like, as far as the network goes, you know, I'm a, I'm a little older and I'm a, I'm a realist. So, in all honesty, I think I think it's so. We'll start with the network because that is really like it's it's a big. I love writing for the network, mm -hmm. and I love you know putting out the show, and I love making the content with the other uh, people in it. And I think honestly, within two to three years, um, it could be something that it's like a go to thing. Like you, like it would pop up on Twitter, and you would recognize the name and recognize some of our faces. And like I've always told, like I've always even told you guys or anybody comes on my show, I interview a lot of podcasters. I'm just as happy if one of you guys becomes, you know, a famous podcaster as I am me. Um, right. That's my goal. But honestly, like I, I would like to like pick up some steam to where, you know, maybe in a year to a year and a half from now, I've got a consistent uh, 
show, a, a vodcast show that, you know, people count on being there each week, you know, you know, have a few hundred viewers that count on me, you know, being in each week, the interaction and things like that. I mean, like I say, I'm a, I'm a realist about it, yeah. but, uh, but now that I've started writing for the network, like that's picked up a whole new side and I really get to express a lot of feelings. So what I'm hoping is that somebody will notice one of my articles. I, you know, I'm not a uh, stick to sports guy. So I, I, I kind of, skirt the edge a little bit of you know the social issues and stuff with sports and all that so you know in a dream world i would hope that somebody would read one of those and reach out to me you know what i mean and want to talk about that Uh, i think that's more my lane because in all honesty i'm not as much a i'm not as much an x's and o's guys as i am a, a a gut feeling and a you know what's going on out you know outside of the locker room and things like that so i would like to kind of become that guy it, you know, that, that stuff is just as interesting as the, all the other things. So, yeah. And yeah. And I've told everybody, like I've learned in the last six months that I, I made a huge mistake by kind of separating those two for all these years. And I realized that that's just not, it's not natural to me. So, yeah. uh, hmm. but, uh, yeah, I think the network, I, I think two to three years of network and honestly, like these guys are, I think they're dedicated and I, I think it could be, I think it really could be something. Awesome. That's great. Well, congratulations. You know, I, it all sounds like, you know, like honestly, like a, a podcast, vodcast network. It's, it's just, it's amazing because I'm, I'm, oh, so ha- I'm so happy that, you know, I know somebody who actually created one of those because I see all these yeah. networks going around, you know, and it's, you have to have like thousands of downloads per episode just to get in, you know, here, you know, with your group, it's, it's sports, but you give them the freedom and you accept anybody and, you know, yes. they do what they want. And it's, it's just, it's awesome. I've actually started on my show because of that, you know, cause it, it, it and it's nice too, because they back you up. Like we talk about a team thing. So I've got these guys, I mean, they're breaking down the drafts and they're, you know, they, they see things on the court that I don't. So now I'm leaning in more towards like, um, the, uh, the, the other parts of sports and kind of the fan side of it. So now I've started to reach out to our other podcasters that we work with mm-hmm. and, um, and to have them on to do a sports show, uh, last week, you know, me and assorted goods did a show. He's a brilliant sports guy. You know and he does? You know, he does more of a historical, you know, breakdown, you know, wow. current events. Great. He does, you know, great show. And then, but he come on and talk sports with me, but it was amazing. And then, uh, next week, you know, uh, or coming up soon. I don't know when this comes out, but, um, uh, I'm going to have Brennan Roy on from, uh, dad's worldwide. And he's going to do the sports show though, because you know, a lot of people want it is actually, I was inspired by you for being honest. You, uh, maybe a month ago on your network, put out like, you know, try something different crossover, you know, you try something that you don't always do. And I yep. thought, man, wonder how many of these people that are podcasters would love to do a sports show but they don't have the platform to do it so i'm giving them the platform and it's it's worked out great so who knows that you know that may turn into something it's just it's evolution and it's so quick man it's it's just Uh, you know what it's like i'm a firm believer like if okay like for for, just for example you run a sports show right so you're mm -hmm. always putting out sports episodes which is understandable okay now my my challenge to everybody I knew uh, last month, I think, was to uh, go out of your comfort zone, you know, do an episode yeah. of something, you know, that you wouldn't normally talk about, you know, like you're a sports guy. So, all right, do an episode about a movie, you know, do episodes about movies mm-hmm. or, you know, so it's and it worked right. out. It worked out really well. You know, I, I know a couple of guys who did it, you know, and you know, it's just, it's something to break up the monotony. I mean, I get that your audience is coming to you for a specific reason to hear about a certain topic, you know, but it's, it's good to break it up every now and then. Yeah. Yeah. No, I thought you had a great feel for that. And it's kind of weird because you're talking to me who, you know, I've obviously done every topic under the sun. So I'm a little (laughs) unique because of Jeff needs help and the sports show. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, he's right. But that's why I, that's why I created Jeff needs help way back when. So I could do, so I've done movies. I've done social commentary. Um, I've done, I so I've done so many things, you know, so, but you're a hundred percent right about that. And when, and I reached out and, um, you know, people are so excited to be on my show because, like, yeah, I'd, like, you know, me and my partner do movies, but I would love to talk about sports for an hour. And I'm like, you know, here's the, here's the platform to do it. So I thought that was great advice. I, I, 
I, and if you have fans, like let's say fans of a show, fans of the basement surge, well, it's not like the only thing they care about is what you talk about that week. So right. you, they may, you may come on and talk about us. So of course you guys are very, very too. So it's kind of hard. You're not a great example either, but you know what I mean? So, uh, but like if they get to know me as a sports guy, then I come on and do something about movies, Well, they still may want my opinion on that. So they yeah. may enjoy it just as much as they did me talking about sports. So I, I thought that was a great idea when you put that out there and I'm, I'm glad it's working out. I, I recommend every, everybody does it. <laughs> All right, Jeff. So my last question of the day is what advice would you give to up and coming podcasters slash vodcasters? Slash vodcasters. Um, <laughs> Let's see. Always, for you know what? Number one, and I know this sounds like I'm, you know, preaching or whatever. Just be on time. Uh, I mean, really, that that's huge. Like the number one thing, and all the people I work with, you know, with off the ball or whatever, like they're clicking in ten minutes before the show starts. It it takes away the anxiety because yes. whoever show it is, like this is easy for me because I'm not running the show tonight. But right. I know how many buttons you got to click. We don't have produ most of us don't have producers to run this stuff. You know what I mean? So like, be on time, be prepared. You know, have answers in your head. And then like, if you're the one running the show, prep your guest. You know, send out the questions. Don't ambush them. Make them feel comfortable. And then the little things. If you're a guest on a show, wear your headphones. Um, yes. You know, don't talk. <laughs> Contrary to what we've seen recently, don't talk over people. Don't eat. Uh, as they're talking. <laughs> because the, the these uh these websites just can't handle it like with the two of us here we can converse pretty freely but once you get to maybe and once you get to four it's chaos mm -hmm. so you have to learn you can so for anybody that's just getting into this if you watch the guys like me and john who have done this a hundred times if you watch when somebody's talking it looks like we're not doing anything but no we're just you got to be quiet because it mess it just literally messes up the sound it's a technical thing so just like you got, you got to always wait. If you have something to say, you know, raise your hand, you know, act like you want to say it. And then the host will know like, like this. And then finally they'll say, and then, and then little things like if you're the host and like call on somebody, just like, you know, you just say like, Oh, it looks like John has something to say. Everybody knows right. to be quiet. Mm -hmm. uh, don't be afraid to mute somebody. If you've got five people and like, I'm a sports guy. So there's some heated debates when we're talking about games and debating subjects and everybody starts yelling, uh, don't be afraid to mute your guest. They they really won't get as mad as you think they are because if you don't, it ruin it might ruin the whole show because if somebody's yelling, like technical wise, I don't know how you know how technical people are, but John gets this. It cuts your sound out. Yeah. So somebody can be having a real good thought, and this guy over here just keeps like saying you know one word, and it's going to screw up the audio for your whole show, especially if you're going to audio after that. Yeah. So just um. Especially Actually, if you're not I would recording say recording on separate tracks, also. So. Yes, yes, and that's a whole different. That's something you can teach people because that's yeah. that's very important, and it's it's difficult to do in in vodcasting. But uh, but the main thing, lean into the technical stuff. Learn the technical stuff. Don't just go on and like, and uh, and and run the show. People respect you to run the show. You know what I mean? Send them questions. You know, tell them. You know, please wear headphones if all possible. Please, um, you Put know, do this. Do Don't. If, mode. Yes. You know. If, um, don't move your phone around. If you're doing a mobile, if you're doing it from a mobile device, things like that, right. people will respect that, especially, you know, I understand, you know, we're talking about if it's not just you and your buddies hanging out, but like, sit yeah. still, right. uh, speak clearly, you know, don't interrupt. Don't interrupt is the main thing. I mean, really that's, you know, just, uh, but yeah, just run the show, but, and mostly you know, have fun, but prep your guest, uh, make your guests feel comfortable, prep your, prep your guests, give them as many questions and try and stay on topic. It'll, it'll make it flow so much easier and you'll get the show over so much quicker. Yeah. Efficiency. Yeah. Speaking of which, Jeff, thank you very much mm -hmm. for coming on the show today. Um, you, you know, I'm, I'm so happy I, I got a chance to get you on because, you know, you, you have some special insights into production uh being that you're a sports guy and because it's kind of it's it's a different genre you know so it's oh, yeah. a different type of vodcast i loved everything you said tonight uh you gave some great advice uh thank you very much for being on the show hey thanks for having me on john anytime you're the best